get into another area here that I think is very important and not looked up upon. First of all, thank you very much for your patience standing by. I appreciate it. Sure. Uh, you are a forensic scientist and medical uh, psychologist uh, with a focus on plastic surgery. You practice in San Diego. You're also internationally recognized for specializing in celebrity behavior, and you consult on those issues. And you have a new book called Awakening Beauty, an illustrated look at mankind's love and hatred of beauty. And you examine society's obsession with images and beauty and how it subconsciously shapes our perceptions of ourselves and the world around us. So I, I want to deal with two issues. The two presidential candidates who've actually been the most honest in what we need to change in our society and not dealing with just with uh, I I illusion but substance are a Ron Paul, a man who I respect uh, on the Republican side, and Dennis Kucinich. The problem is Dennis Kucinich uh, will not be elected for no other reason than he doesn't have the it look. He doesn't have the charismatic look. And, and Ron Paul, uh, neither one. And yet in debate after debate, I hear how Hillary Clinton looked good, how she responded well, how Obama looks younger and is a hip in his clothing, and nothing about the substance, what they're not talking about, instead of the triteness of what they are talking about. And if you ask, if you ask uh, Rudy Giuliani any question, uh, if you said, Rudy, uh, do you believe that the farm subsidies are too excessive? He'll say, I'm glad I was there at 9-11. Uh, it, it's as if this man's a walking robot. He has nothing else to talk about. And yet it'll come down to the image. It, for Bill Clinton, it was the image. And I'm looking at a society that is so obsessed with image that have we forgotten that there should be some substance behind the image? Your thought, please. First of all, I appreciate uh, the uh, introduction because it is a serious subject and uh, it is not given its due, the relationship between visual perception, the phenotype, and the genotype or the substance. My own uh, academic background was in brain body behavior as it related to visual perception and the relationship between genotype and phenotype. And what all of that means is exactly within the context that you pointed out, there can be a dissonance between the visual image and how a person is perceived and who and what they really are. Sometimes that is a consonant relationship, those two factors. In presidential politics, before we had media, you know, it took, it took several weeks for the death of Abraham Lincoln to make its way from one end of the country to the other. And Abe Lincoln was a man who stood about six feet six, and he had a very high voice. And reporters at the time uh, described President Lincoln in any number of, with any number of pejorative adjectives. And President Lincoln became one of our most important presidents in the history of this country. And if one looks at his personal background, uh, we see a man who is resilient, who was resilient, who was thoughtful, and very brave, a lot of character. I wonder if he could make it today. And what you're pointing out, Gary, is that ever since the 1960 debates between Richard Nixon and John Kennedy, the first televised debates. Individuals who heard that debate on the radio believed that Richard Nixon had won that debate, but those who viewed it on television overwhelmingly believed that John Kennedy won the debate. Here's a study that is a good preface to your inquiry. If you look at first year West Point cadets and your goal is to predict who in 25 years will achieve the highest rank, one need not 
do anything other than look at the size and angle of the cadet's jaw. That is the best predictor of who will achieve the highest rank, which suggests that we human beings are inordinately attuned to various phenotypic configurations, not only static, that would be proportion, ratio, structure, but the way those structures together move for the study of kinesics. By extension, shouldn't John Holmes then have run for president? Well, that's a very good question because we have a society who and which is made up of individuals who are into colossalism. Colossalism is described and defined operationally as an exaggerated, caricatured phenotype. That is antithetical to health, for instance. Images, what is physically attractive, for example, asking that very simple question, what is physically attractive? And there are certain things we know, for instance, symmetry and lucidity and certain proportions are universally judged to be attractive across the planet. There are certain individual differences. You know, the Mercy tribesmen put what we would describe as saucers in their lower lip, and we don't find in the Western world that to be particularly attractive, but symmetry among Mercy tribesmen is as attractive as it is for those of us living in Chicago, New York, or Los Angeles. The effect upon health of colossalism, which, interestingly enough, does very much dovetail into your discussion having to do with greed and investments. I have to tell you, listening to the introduction, I, I've never been so happy in all of my life for having never worked as a stockbroker, <laughs> mortgage broker, or I was so pleased that I can disclose to all of you that I've never been a member of a foundation and I've never been a politician. Good for you. <laughs> uh, um, let me say something about Dennis Kucinich, because if you look at the substance, he's a very brave person. Yes, he is. Those of us who study human behavior and who understand the biopsychosocial precursors to all behavior, would judge this man to be very brave in any number of ways. In fact, for those of us, I think uh, I've shared this insight with other diagnosticians who, who believe, uh, who understand something about human behavior. We actually think Dennis would probably be very, very, very tough as a president very inflexible, and he would certainly be a person who would be um, a very powerful opponent to any foe of this country. But put that aside, Dennis, unfortunately, does not have the angle of the jaw issues. He does not have the proportions. Uh, he's that not an Arnold Schwarzenegger. He isn't, but Hillary Clinton does. Hillary has the the most dominant alpha male facial characteristics of anyone on the panel. And I've argued for years and have attempted to provide insight that allows us to circumvent the image. Uh, it would be rather like talking to the fish and saying, look, it's just a lure. Pay no attention to it. But uh, my words fall on deaf ears because we human beings are so responsive. Now, now the, the to visual stimuli, and we are interested in, in the iconic symbolic value. Um, mustaches, height, angles of jaw are all secondary visual cues. You know, I did an interesting study Everyone finds the study to be interesting. It, it looks at women's sexual response as measured by heart rate, various markers of blood chemistry, vaginal secretions, and pupil dilation. 
to various static and video depictions of men. And paired with those data generated by looking at the physiological markers, Gary, we looked at what women said they found to be attractive. And they were the, the dissonance between what women really responded to, they responded to, was almost a zero overlap. So the two curves of the data didn't touch. And I felt that at the time that this, this study illustrated something very uh, interesting and something that I think that is, is apropos to almost anything that you talk about, and it has to do with our primitive nature competing for resources of, of energy, whether it be biological energy, psychological energy, spiritual energy, with what we know is right, what we know we should do, our more evolved self. Women in particular, intelligent women, have provided any number of valuable data because intelligent women thoughtful women, educated women, understand exactly what I'm talking about. And they are beguiled. I can talk about the male version if, if you're interested later, but women are beguiled by this reality that who they are really physically attracted to is discordant with who they think or they know who should, or for that matter, who they ultimately would be happy with. So Hollywood understands this, and Hollywood preens the bad boy image. It has to do with phenotypic measures of testosterone. Well, let me just put it real, because we're running out of time. The average male looking at someone from Hollywood like a Glenn Close is going to appreciate her acting, but they'll look at Pamela Anderson's body and suddenly one sticks out more than the other, even intelligent or sensitive men, what we say that we would be interested in and what we ultimately are, and you're saying the same is true for women. What the woman, sensitive, educated woman will say about what excites her and versus what she actually physiologically is cited by, you're dealing with the limbic brain mechanism, you're dealing with primordial urges, you're dealing with the, the ability to survive at the genetic level and looking for the strong alpha dominant male, and yet the man will, woman will say, no, I want the sensitive, kind, thoughtful man. Intellectually, culturally, yes. Primor primordially, not necessarily. I'm going to invite you back because I didn't even get to the area I wanted to get to, um, but we will get to that. If you're open for another uh, go-round, we will have you back. Love to. Good. Thank you very much for being with us. My guest today, Professor Anthony uh, Napoleon. I'm Gary Nall, and we will have him back. Nice to have you with us. For those of you who are listening over the Internet, we have a lot of people listening over the Internet. Wow, I'm looking at the numbers, and they are up there. I, I couldn't believe how many people have been downloading our shows. Uh, we're, we're up numbers like 7,000 people per show on this show. I just got those numbers in, and that's really surprising. And we hit a new record today just listening over the Internet. There are a whole lot of areas I want to get to. But I appreciate his cadence. He, he's very methodical. He's teaching us something. So what I'll do is next time I'll provide him with like a whole hour and start at the top so we can take this almost like a classroom on the air. And uh, because I believe we are seduced by youth, I believe that um, that we have to understand that the natural wholesome beauty that people have starts with their personality that what really attracts you is what a person is as a person and how they look becomes secondary, but what attracts us is what they look like. Then how we respond to them is about what they are. Are they a nice person? Are they kind? Are they funny? Are they open? Do they care about us or just themselves? And I can tell you, I've been around a lot of people that have great bodies, great faces, but no personality. They didn't care. They were selfish. and I, There was nothing there. And yet, when I was traveling in uh, Spain and in and, uh, um, and Jamaica and in Brazil, whoa, <laughs> women hot in Brazil, whoa, God, oh my God, it's like, oh. Gary, let's not talk about Sweden, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then you go to.